to think about how to accommodate cryptocurrency into their uh, their uh, financial system for example indian government sh should say like how do we deal with cryptocurrency okay so for that many governments have come, in, come, come out with an idea called cbdc or i would say the central bank digital currency which will try to integrate the cryptocurrency into their uh, their, their, their organization and help people to conduct transactions on them okay so are there any questions here uh, okay i don't see any questions then i will move on okay okay so now i told you i like cryptocurrency but i don't like stability i mean uh, price changes i like for, i mean uh, the rupees which is a fiat currency but i don't like uh, it is cost effect it is not cost effective also okay stable coins are cryptocurrencies without volatility that means they don't change that means they give me the stability of a real money but also they give the advantage of the cryptocurrency they share lot of same powers as the cryptocurrencies that means they are like cryptocurrencies but their value is steady and more like a traditional currency they don't change like this so that means they will not be like this one day here one the next day here and all they will give you a kind of a stability okay and more like a traditional currency okay so you have an access to stable money but you can use it on ethereum ethereum is one of the uh, cryptocurrencies or a cryptocurrency platform so my question is like can i take the advantage of cryptocurrency plus the real money the answer is yes how using stable coins so stable coins are cryptocurrencies but they have a more stability they are not uh, um, they have a, a quality of resilience that means even if there is a lot of change in on day to day basis because of the different model that we are using they will have a stability okay so what are the stable coins what are the feature stable i mean stable coins are global like cryptocurrency and can be sent over the internet like the uh, bitcoin and all okay cryptocurrency they are easy to receive and send once you have a ethereum account ethereum account is a term that i used but this means actually any digital wallet that you can use demand for stable currency is very high because what people want i told you is want to take the advantage of both cryptocurrency and the and the real currency okay and stable coins are secured by cryptography so they have all the qualities all the properties of a digital i um, mean uh, cryptocurrency but they also have the support and stability of uh, the real money so no one can forge transaction on your behalf so these are the features why do we create stable coins because i want to take advantage of cryptocurrency plus of real money okay so then how do i get that stability that how can i do that one by what do i need to do so that actually i can uh, do a kind of a, a stability i can bring stability to uh, cryptocurrency the first idea is actually called fiat bank that means you have 10 bit uh, bitcoins i will actually have 10000 rupees behind it my not over that amount then actually order the fluctuation that happen over there actually i will try to make up make up from this money that i have okay basically it is like i owe you for a traditional fiat currency usually dollars or indian rupees indian government is also doing some kind of a thing you use your fiat currency that means you pay say 10000 rupees to buy a stable coin that you can later cash in or redeem with your original currency that means it is like essentially like a uh, stock market so that means you pay some 10000 rupees buy some 500 shares of that company and you know, hold it for some time and actually then you can sell it and get back your money okay so crypto fiat uh, fiat back is actually there will be an amount which will be back that means you pay real money and get a fiat i mean and a stable currency so what are the advantages safe against crypto volatility that means you will get certainly get your money back and you it will not even if the market is crashed changes in price are minimal so no matter there may be 10 or 20 percent of change in the in the cryptocurrency but stable currencies will not change that fast okay but the disadvantage is centralized because somebody is putting their money to give you a stability he will control that entire organization for that reason it is centralized that means you will not take complete advantage of a uh, cryptocurrency which are decentralized requires auditing and ensure that company has sufficient reserves for example somebody may dupe you they may just actually pay 10000 rupees by the cryptocurrency but they may not use that 10000 rupees to back your investment in that case there is a kind of a chance of a fraud okay 
So some of the examples of a fiat based this one USDC and true USD. So let me repeat what I'm trying to get is actually I want to take advantage of a cryptocurrency which is volatile. So I am creating what is called a stable coin. So one of the way to is to buy with your current currency, okay, the real currency and keep it in with yourself and then you can give that back to, a, uh, to the same vendor and actually then you can get the money back. By doing that actually I am covering myself from this kind of instability. So one, two examples of that are actually on the American, both are American. Okay. The second idea which is used for stable coins actually is to support by a precious metal. For example, now if you give a one kilo of gold and the equivalent of cryptocurrency is given to you. But since the gold is actually supporting that, whatever the stability or whatever the volatility that would happen actually is protected by that. Okay. Like we had back currency instead of this stable coins use resources like gold are maintain their value. So that is exactly that means it's like you exchange they exchange gold for your money or you exchange your money for their gold. Okay. What is the advantage against crypto altogether? That means if there is a huge changes in the market, probably if you have seen this Bitcoin over the last few months, there is a huge change. It might have lost, lost value of anything to 20, 30 percent. Okay. But again, the problem is it is centralized. Someone must issue the tokens. You need to trust the token issuer who are that. So one of the great example of this is called Pax Gold. It's a it's an institution which actually helps you to buy stable coins uh, against you, uh, the gold uh, background. I mean, uh, backup. Now there are other third category called crypto backed, where actually you support a cryptocurrency with another cryptocurrency. For example, <clears throat> so you are investing in uh, Bitcoin. But to support and to stabilize it, actually, you also invested in ETS, Ethereum. So any too many changes in the Bitcoin actually is compensated by uh, the ETH. Okay. These stable coins are backed by other crypto assets like ETH. Okay. Their price depends on the value of underlying asset that is collateral. That means how many different cryptocurrencies that we have. So the idea is that if you have 10 cryptocurrencies supporting each other, then even if two of them actually fall in prices, Remaining eight will bring stability to that one. Okay. What are the pros? Transparent and fully decentralized. This will take complete advantage of a, a digital currency, man, a, a cryptocurrency. Quick turn into other type of crypto. For example, you can buy, start with ETH, then go to Bitcoin, then you can go to Lira and other things. So this is an advantage. And it is completely no external custodian. That means you don't have to trust anybody because it is completely on the blockchain. Okay. So, but the problem with this is actually less stable than fiat backed stable coins. So since entire thing depends on cryptocurrencies, the stability is very limited, I mean marginally limited. Okay. So one of the famous examples is called DAI, which is actually a kind of a crypto backed currency. Okay. The last one, which is very important is called Allah algorithm. Okay. These stable coins are not backed by any other asset. That means there is no money behind that. There is no gold behind that. There is no uh, cryptocurrency behind that. Instead of an algorithm will sell tokens if the price falls below a desired value and supply tokens if the value goes beyond a desired amount. So this is something like trading. Okay. So an algorithm will keep buying, selling and all. Since it covers a lot many hundreds of um, cryptocurrencies, the idea is that the law of averages will work so that you will always benefit. Okay. So advantages, no collateral is needed. That means you don't have to give your money, now you have to give your gold controlled by public algorithm, which is again monitored by many agencies. The, uh, the, I mean, the, the problem is that exactly you need to trust or be able to read that algorithm because many a times it so happen that algorithm is too complicated, not everybody will be able to understand it. Your balance of coins will change based on the total supply. That means like in any bit, I mean, uh, cryptocurrency is like that. So your balance, your price will keep changing. Huh? And there is one company called Ample Force which does this. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so, are there any questions? So, what I have covered so far is actually now I want to take advantage of cryptocurrency plus the real money. So, there are three ways for which I can do that's called, uh, called stable coins. Either I can put uh, money, fiat currency behind that, or I can put precious metal on behind this or I can put another cryptocurrency behind that or finally I can put an algorithm behind it. Okay. 
Okay, it's uh, uh, Mustafa has asked this question. What is cryptography? So cryptography is a science of encrypting and decrypting a message. What it means is <coughs> so when you are sending messages on the networks like internet or mobile, there is a chance that somebody in between you and the other person, for example, suppose you are sending a ma message on your WhatsApp or to somebody say in Mumbai, then it actually passes through the network. And if the raw text is sent, that means whatever you have typed is sent, then there is a chance that somebody would read it. So how do I avoid that? The science, there is a science called cryptography, which will help you to do that. So what it does actually, as soon as you send the, uh, the type the message, it encrypts it. That means it will code it and send it to this final destination. There, the person is able to decrypt and read it. So this science is called cryptography. And if you have been a regular user of a WhatsApp, you know that it keeps sending, I mean, uh, publishing a message at the top, like every message is encrypted end to end. That means it will start after encrypting from your machine and it will go there and decrypt it. And if the person is replying to you, that gets encrypted there and comes to you in an encrypted form and gets decrypted on your machine. So this is, this is called cryptography. So Mustafa, have I answered your question? Okay. And Sauro, which is the best platform for investing and trading? So if you are talking about uh, Sauro, uh, the cryptocurrencies, uh, this one, these are the, are the different ones. For example, you can invest in USDC or TrueUSD or Pax Gold or Dime or Amplipol. So if you are actually talking about um, this one. Okay. Mustafa, have I answered your question? Okay, uh, am I audible or not? Yes, yes, okay. Uh, so, Saurav, if the question is specifically on cryptocurrency investment and trading, these are the four things. <clears throat> but if you are talking about general trading and all, then there are different things are available. Uh, algorithmic trading, I have done a session on that sometime back that I can share you with you. And also crypto trading or also online trading and all. Okay, that I can do. But then uh, the idea is that there are methods available for that, platforms available for that. Okay. So, okay. So next question, I think by the end of the session, I will share you that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next question is like, how can government also take advantage of the cryptocurrencies? Because now more and more people are investing in cryptocurrencies and if you don't accommodate them, then actually it will cause a lot of problem both for the government also for individuals. So it may so happen that more and more people will invest in cryptocurrencies and less and less money is available in the uh, in the real money format. So in order to do that, one of the best solution for a government is actually to accommodate that. That means now we should make some, some idea, some procedure where actually we also have some kind of equivalent to digital money and allow people to invest in those cryptocurrencies and help them to grow okay and that is what is called cdbc that is cdbc is central depository bank okay sorry cbdc it is actually um uh, <coughs> so let me ask to start with the question what is currency see in modern economics currency is a form of a money that is your coins your notes they are all actually issued exclusively by the sovereign. That means in India, the RBI will issue this money. Okay. It's a liability of the issuing central bank. That means who will give 10 rupees value for me? It is the central bank or the Reserve Bank of India. Currency is fiat. That means it is always a printed or a coin. Okay. And it's a legal tender. That means if I give 10 rupees, nobody can say that it is illegal because it is given by the government. And currency is normally issued on paper. You know that in India, we have 5 rupees. I mean, 10 rupees note, 15 rupees, I mean, sorry, 50 rupees note, 100 rupees note. Okay. Currency is anything guaranteed by the government for the given value printed on that. But then currency is it's not paper is not the only form which is characteristic. For example, when you make a UPI payment today or a PTM, we are not using any paper currency, right? Okay. Okay. So now central bank digital currency is a digital form of currency which which is a legal tender created and backed by central bank so far they have been doing only for the coins and notes 
okay now now when they start the cbdc what they will do is uh, the government will start giving you digital currency that can be used okay cdbc is a managed digital ledger that means you know digital ledger are, is actually the creation of a blockchain uh, which is created a blockchain and expediting increasing the security of payment between banks institution and individuals so once they are capable of creating a digital currency then it can be withdrawn or it can be sent anywhere today what actually happens is if i create say i um, mean if i have 100 rupees and i want to send it to america then i have to find an equivalent of that in a dollar currency and send it if i want to send it to say australia or england then i have to find equal currencies but suppose indian government or any government for that actually creates a digital currency then sending them it becomes very easy for example in india you can send an epi amount from anywhere to anywhere because it's available in a digital indian rupees right so cbdc is created so that you can enable people to use the same currency in a digital format so what are the three aspects of uh, uh, cdbc okay digital assets that means they are digital asset that means it's like see having 10 rupees or 100 rupees with you it is an asset for you okay and it is central bank backed that means rbi will support that central bank control that means the flow of money is also controlled by the bank itself okay so what is the advantage i told you central banks are future oriented tools for example assume that in 10 years time everybody starts using more and more uh, digital currency then who will use notes and uh, coins nobody will use that and secondly if people are start doing that then government also can stop printing notes and all because it's a very expensive process right so that's the reason a cbdc can be used by government i mean they can be used okay what are the benefits so actually blockchain the cdb is also the problem inefficiencies that means we can send it directly to the other person because it's a peer to peer it doesn't go through our bank so if i send a dd to you i have to take a dd in a bank then send it by post and all or if i want to send money on, on my upi it will goes to my mother bank and then it goes to the destination bank and all that is not needed so large scale decentralized clearing of us and assist digital that means you can get a check a uh, money paid instantaneously otherwise if you deposit a check it will take 3 days for you to get the money okay what are the use cases that means if government has cbdc what are the different uses retail because i person like i and you can use it for a retail purposes and even a businesses can also use it as a wholesale that means company like infosys can use cbdc to make a transaction with an american or a australian company okay so what are the benefits of retail cbdc increase availability that means if i have cash then i have to find an equivalent change currency and all but everything is available in digital format then that money is available 24 by 7 i don't have to go to shop i can just transfer it streamline recollection that means it becomes instantaneous okay now you pay it and immediately it gets credited for example if you have been going to shopping this place on paytm and all the moment you take the picture of the of their um, and the logo and you pay the money immediately a voice message will go to the owner saying that a um, 25 rupees of credit has been paid to you okay so that means it becomes streamlined faster and enhance monetary policy that is government can completely control because everything is on the digital format okay similarly benefits other wholesale dc that means if a company like reliance and is paying to another bank or another company that will actually become very uh easy for them and not only that cbdc can take advantage of blockchain that means system trust you know documents on blockchain are not uh, changeable they are mute uh, immutable to so that advantage programmability that means banks can do certain things for example if they change a uh, say interest rate and all it will automatically implemented everywhere instantaneously data availability since everything is happen on a digital platform then actually the nation or the government will know what is the uh, the money movement what is the spending patterns and all it is like facebook or google company having every information about the user okay and you can also come out with additional innovative financial products okay so in a traditional bank this is what actually happens now for example assume that is in india then you actually <coughs> you give a check it goes to a currency bank then there is a change and then finally it come to that that means there is a kind of a 
time delay that would happen. But suppose you are using a CBDC, then there is a shared ledger, which is actually creation of a blockchain. So now it is almost instantaneous. Now there is a client, there is a client, then if he exchanges money and it will directly go. It is speed, it is cheaper and it is faster. Okay. So the whole lesson today is actually now if you take want to take advantage of a cryptocurrency as an individual, you can go for stable coins and if a government, you can go as a CBDC and Indian government is already framing policy towards it. That means they have a, uh, the Reserve Bank of India has put out a proposal uh, to the government that how can we go for this CBDC. Okay. Are there any questions on this? Okay, no, no. See, Prem, uh, Indian government has not recognized uh, crypto. It is in a sense, okay. But they are working a policy towards it. There is a I mean, paper um, created, I mean, actually drafted by RBI, and they are working on it. Okay. Okay. So it's not banned. I mean, currently it is not allowed. That is true. But uh, the fact that they are not allowed means it is a ban. Okay. But then actually, they allow you uh, to have trade coming uh, cryptocurrencies, sell them and all, but they will put a tax on that. That's the first thing. And secondly, uh, they don't allow you to exchange. For example, you want to go to an Indian business and say that I have a Bitcoin, uh, I will pay in my Bitcoin. That is not allowed. Okay. okay. Uh, Akash is asking, can CBDC uh, coexist with stable coins? Yes. Okay. Stable coins actually given by a third parties. Okay, the company will do that. CDBC, uh, CBDC is actually given by the government. Okay, yeah, they can coexist. There is no problem in that. Yeah. So, are there any other questions that you want to ask me? Okay. I think it's, uh, Sauro, I will try to find my your paper, okay? Mm, I don't know where we are stuck. But I think I should get you that paper which, I mean, that uh, streaming, which... Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Saurav, can you look at this? Uh, I have shared you a video. Okay, this was about uh, algorithmic trading, which will tell you how to make algorithmic trading on the uh, on the currencies. Okay, that's first. That's one thing. Okay, then uh, any other questions? Okay, uh, I'm just waiting in case any question you are asking. Sauro, I have answered your question. And uh, okay, so uh, if there are no questions, then uh, tomorrow I'll be talking about this. Uh, that is technicalities of decentralization. Okay, so this talks about like the concept of decentralization. How does it actually? Has implications for everybody, and how can you build certain things about that? It's like see, it's decentralization is a concept like a database. You know, okay, database can be used for anything. For example, you can create a database for all your uh, children, may all students in your college, or Indian railways can create a database for all its passengers. A bank can create for all its customers. So it's a generic idea which can be used for different purposes. And here tomorrow I'll be talking about technicalities of the decentralization. I mean, what does it mean? How can it be used? What are the use cases and other things? Okay. So if you have any specific questions regarding that, you can come tomorrow. Or if you have any questions regarding today's session, please do ask me. I'm here for another two, three minutes. Okay. Okay, great, great. Uh, thank you, Prem. Uh, thanks for this. Uh, if you have any specific, you can ask me. Uh, 
and uh, your question was indian government plan crypto okay uh, i told you uh, it's not actually banning it is trying to find a policy towards that so until then it can be treated as like it is banned okay but then it is not an um, active step okay it is uh, we are taking time to accommodate that and as i told you know we already are the indian government is already published a paper on cbdc and uh, uh, it will actually go past because no government is like to lose its uh, citizen or want to deny an advantage to them right okay. okay then bye for now tomorrow please join tomorrow tomorrow 6:30 Okay, bye-bye.